and just keep on blessing us over and over and over again. Amen. Thank God for today. Amen. I, I know it may be a little early now, but some of us get up early. Let's go to work. Amen. Get up to serve God. We ought to be happy. Amen. Able to walk in here because last week I was limping in here, but I'm walking in here today. And I just thank God for today. Gave me a new day. Amen. God is good. Eh? Amen. We're going to do a little verse. I feel the Lord. Yeah. I Faith first, but we're going to be reading from 121 uh, Psalms. Son of God, my Lord and Savior, I believe in the Holy Spirit who proceed from the Father and the Son, who is the giver of life. I believe in the Bible, the universal church, holy baptism, and the Lord's Supper. I believe in the resurrection of the dead and the life in the world to come. We're going to be reading 121 Psalms. If you got it, say, I got it. Okay. It, it and this reads, I will lift up my mind as unto hills from whence cometh my hill. He that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is my keeper. The Lord is my shade upon the right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, or uh, the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve, <coughs> preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even from evermore. I, <coughs> I read you the 121. Lord, we come to you just thanking you, Lord. Thank for you, Lord. For this oh so much gracious morning, Lord. We do want to thank you for looking over our family, both far and near, Lord. Lord, we just want you to bless and keep the ones in Florida in your loving hands, Lord. Just remind them that you're the one that's in charge, Lord. And just, just let them know that they should take shelter and leave and, and be uh, obedience, Lord. Because when you come through, Lord, you, you're coming through with a mighty hand. And you, uh, you just let them know power and strength, Lord, we just, just come to you just as humble as we can today, Lord. We gather in a few this morning, Lord, but we, we gather to uh, serve your name, Lord, and just, just Lord, just for everything, and, and Lord, we do want to thank you for looking over our mother's womb, Lord, and, and, and look over the, all the mental sick, Lord, just, just help them, Lord, as, as through their lives and days and things. I know you say you put no more in your heart than you put in your bear, Lord. Just, just have him, Lord. Just. This morning, even though we face many situations and many circumstances, how many know whatever you need, you can find it in the Word of Whatever you need, you can find it. You can find it. Oh, find it in the word, word of God. Oh, I need relief from my trouble today. This word, he's God. And joy, peace, it's what you need. It's right there. Oh, I know it's right there, it's right there, it's there. Peace and relief from a troubled heart. 
You can find it in the Word of God. Thank God for all of you coming out to be with us early this morning. We know that we have modified. I thank God for Dean Hill Missionary Baptist Church, and let me tell you why. I was, I did a revival at Seven Best Friends, and so I had been talking to him leading up to the revival, praying and just thinking about both my mother and the revival and everything that was going on, and I told him about the, the revival was going to be a help to me because one of the things I had to make up my mind to do was choose to worship. It has nothing to do with what you're going through. Worship is about God. Right it's about how any, any witnesses to that, worship is about right revival like they used to. And he distracted you, know what you're there for. I said, amen, I'm there to teach. I'm there to teach and preach the word of God. And the reason why I wanted to give accolades and accommodations to this church is because every single night that church was almost full. Can I get a witness? <laughs> to do is teach and preach the word of God. So I thank God for you. I thank God for my Dean Hill Church family. And then for all those in the community that came out. As I said, I don't preach a lot of revivals. I don't plan to preach a lot of revivals. We thank God for you. Y'all get that almost every Sunday, don't you? Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. We like the Bible here. And one of the things that we always try to teach hard to preach my mother's funeral, for those of y'all who don't know that. I, I, somebody said, Pastor Ryan, it didn't seem hard. It seemed easy to you. It wasn't easy. It, it, it was hard to hold myself together and, and sort of detach myself from my emotions. And that's exactly what I had to do. I had to put my heart and my emotions over here and try to focus on everybody else. But don't you know, as soon as I got through preaching, my heart and my emotions came right on back. I'm going to miss I'm going to miss my mother. And, and, and I thank God for her, and I thank God for the whole lot of mamas. Amen. Got a whole lot of other mamas sitting in here in this place. And what I was saying earlier was, even though I missed last Sunday, I never fret or worry when I'm not meant to be whether Pastor Brian is here or Pastor Brian is not here. Dean Hill Missionary Baptist Church is meant to be about the Word of God. Can I get a witness? That's what we come for. That's what we come for. And, and so we just thank God for you. We thank God for all of you, our brothers and sisters. <laughs> but listen, we praise God for each and every one of you. We thank you for coming today. Please keep the Reed fam prayer. Somebody asked me, what's the hardest time for you, Pastor Brian, in dealing with the loss of your mother? It's the morning. It's when you wake up half sleep and you think to yourself, I need to call mama. Oh, yeah. Then you remember, mama gone. So I can't, can't call mama. But you know what? I can always call on the name of the Lord. Yeah. In the early mornings, I can call on the name of the Lord. So we thank God for each and every one of you. I believe we're here, church family. Why don't we stand to our feet? Let's greet one another in the name of the Lord. It is good to see you on this Sunday morning. This is the day that the Lord had made. We ought to rejoice and be glad. And to give the Lord one more hand clap of praise. And let's greet one another in the name of our Lord for just a moment.
teaching this morning. I want to talk to you about, you know, what's going on in our nation right now. And I know many of you are aware that Hurricane Harvey completely devastated, uh, devastated Houston and the Houston area. And supposedly over 100,000 homes were damaged in the coast of Florida. Hit the Florida Keys earlier this morning with winds up to 135 miles per hour. And it's making its way up the coast of Florida. God's people need to be praying. Anybody believe that? We need to be praying. I always think about no matter what storm you are going through, somebody somewhere is going through a worse storm than you. Somebody somewhere is going through a worse storm than you. And so I want us to be praying for this nation and praying for those areas, those people that are impacted. And then prayers for families, single mothers, isn't it amazing how the most impoverished always get hit the hardest? And so in the Houston area, for one, I know that they are struggling to provide for these children, these babies, then we'll talk about this a little bit more. I think next Sunday would be good when you know, people will be back on their regular schedules. But why don't you do this for me if the Lord touches your heart? Can we bring just a package of pampers or diapers out here? Any size, it does not matter. I want us to do a diaper drive here at this church over the next few weeks. And I want us to get those things together, and I want us to take them off to a Red Cross donation center. How many of y'all know we can do our little bit to help, too? All right, all right, all right. And so I don't know what you think, but I think 100 packages of pampers or diapers would make a difference to somebody. And so I, I, our church is big enough. Somebody said, we're a small church, Pastor Brian. We don't have that many members, but we got enough to make a difference. We got enough to help somebody. So as the Lord touches your heart over the next couple of weeks, we'll just do it for a couple of weeks because I know that the, ur the uh, need is urgent. But let's get our resources together and see if we can not go and just buy. It doesn't matter what size. It doesn't matter how many. But let's just buy some packages of diapers. Bring them out to the church. We'll, we'll provide a place to collect. Them. I, can be. I can be. What it says, faith. And, I walk by faith. and not Roman. You didn't know there was a book named after you. Did. Honor the word of God. Honoring the Bryant in her absence most especially. Romans chapter number one. We're going to begin with the eighth verse. I want to show you something here in this passage today. First, that's a good place to begin. First, Romans chapter number one, verse eight, Paul says this to the church at Rome. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all. Listen to this, that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. For God, at length, I might have a prosperous journey by the will of God. Paul said, by any means, I want to get to you. To have a prosperous journey by the will of God that I might come to you. Look at verse number 11. For I long to see you, that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift. I like that. I long to see you, that I might impart unto you some spiritual gift to the end that you might be established, that you might be strengthened, that you might grow. Verse number 12. That is, that I may be confident together with you by the mutual faith, both of you and me. Paul says, as I give you the word, it helps me. Verse number 13. Now, I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, that oftentimes I purposed. I made up my mind to come to you, but I was not led hitherto. I was led hitherto that I might have some fruit among you, even as among other Gentiles. Listen to this. And that's why I'm dead of both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. So as much as is in me, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are in Rome also. Verse number 16, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. Are you ashamed? That's a good question, isn't it? 
Are you ashamed of the gospel? I'm not ashamed of the gospel. It is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek, for therein is the righteous of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just. I want to preach to you today from the topic of spiritual show. If this gets messed up, it's because I mess it up. If this doesn't reach somebody, it's because of me, not because of your word. If I give your word the way it was intended, your word will do what it's intended to do. Your word will teach, your word will reach, your word will encourage. So, Lord, I pray right now that you just don't let me get in the way of what your spirit and your word are trying to do. Use me as your vessel and your instrument today, Lord, to encourage your people. Convict those that need convicting. Convince those that need convincing. And, Lord, yes, your word even still saves in 2017. Convert those that need converting. And, Lord, we will be careful to give you all praise, glory, and honor. And, and, and Abby started school this year. Kindergarten. Pre-kindergarten, actually, because she's four years old. Can I just share this with you? I like the way they do stuff in kindergarten. I like the way they do stuff in kindergarten. Why is that, Pastor Brown? Let me share with you why. Abby had just started kindergarten. Brown paper bag home one day. And we read what was on the bag, and the bag said this. This assignment is all. He brings it back. She, four years old. They didn't ask us if she was an introvert or extrovert. In other words, they didn't ask us if she was shy or she was bold. They didn't ask us if she was comfortable. They just said, put something in the bag. And they said, we call this assignment show and tell. It's show and and it's tail. I don't want to talk about kingdom or kindergarten show and tell. I want to talk about kingdom. And the world wants to know what do we stand for? The world in here. But your assignment is not to bring it in here. Your assignment is to take it out and put in your bag. Isn't it amazing how comfortable Minister Rogers some people in and all these other things? Some folk got stuff in their bag. But I want to know, is there anybody here that loves the Lord enough to go up? I know you ain't no a great speaker. I know you may not have. Only if we got the Lord in our bag, we can tell somebody who he is and what he stands for. Paul, Paul understood this when he wrote this to the church at Rome. I love the way he spoke to the church at Rome because he begins, and just so you know, Paul didn't even plant this church in Rome. Paul wasn't writing to a church that he had planted. Paul was writing to a church that he wanted to get to, that he wanted to visit. But Paul was saying, I love you guys. I'm praying for you guys. I care about you guys. And Paul said, I love you so much, I want to play show and tell with you. Paul said, I love you so much, I want to come and see you. And so that's where we begin. In verse number 11, look at what Paul says. Yeah, with him? Do you want to see him? Just to spend time? Paul said, no, I long to see you that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift. When I come to see you, um, we want to know her. We want to get to know her. We, we want to know more about her. So you them to know what kind of family she's from. We want them to know what we believe. And we want to give her something that she can remember. You give them something. Give them something that let them know, even at four years old, what you stand for. Let them know what kind of family. She I said, you ain't got to be complicated. You ain't got to preach a... At four years old, I'm a church girl, and church girls rock. Let them know who you are. Everybody is so to anything, talk about anything. But I want to know, is there anybody that loves the Lord enough to say the main thing I want to talk about is Jesus? Paul said, when I come see you, I want to give you. What's in, what's in your bag, Paul? I got a spiritual gift. I'm bringing a spirit. But when I come, the thing that I name is I want to bring a spiritual gift. To give to you, to help you. The reason why we ought to name, the reason why we ought to put in our bag who Jesus is and what. Don't talk about the Lord. Yeah. Anybody in here love Jesus? And we ought to be willing to give somebody the gift that has been given to us. Paul said, I long the word is bring, but name and bring sound together. So I, I want to say, what's in my heart? That I'm coming to see you. Abby's assignment, Abby's assignment, bring the, bring the brown paper you know what would have messed the whole assignment up, Reverend Marty? And look at the bag. They said you need to bring the bag to the school. 
put what you believe in in the bag and then bring the bag back to the school. Isn't it amazing how folk expect the pastor to get folks saved? But folk expect for us to bring it. Bring it where, Pastor Brown? Wherever we go. Wherever we go, whatever we do, we're supposed to be taken home to see you. And I got a gift for you. How many of y'all know we got something good? Take it with you everywhere you go. And as God gives you opportunity, you ought to tell somebody. Among you. The assignment is to name it. Put it find out. Bring it back. Bring it back. But then not only do you need to name it, not only do you need to bring it, you know what you need to do next? Show you what's in my bag. But now I got to tell it. She's going to pull out the little Bible and it's going to remember what to say. I have to preach a sermon to share your faith. I, I, I want to have some fruit among you Gentiles. Paul says in verse number 14, I'm debtor, both the Greeks and to barbarians, both to the wise and to the young. He says, you know what, God has been so good to me, I want to explain it. I ain't what I used to be, so I want to tell you what well, God, anybody like that in here? You, because God has changed me and I want to tell somebody I want to explain to somebody Paul says and you know what that means that means I'm in debt Paul says I'm a debtor I know what God has done for me I know how much God has changed me I know that God has searched on Sunday morning all dressed up I got up at night else as a matter of fact we come because we owe the Lord how much do I owe the Lord I got a debt and I need to share it. You need to not only name it, you need to bring it. I want folk to know that it ain't about the choir. And it ain't about the preacher. And it ain't about the building. Every time I think about how God has blessed me, I can't keep it to myself. I have anything. What's in you is going to come out of you. When I get happy, I got to say thank you. That God saved you for you to you gonna soften? It's a sit. Apple meant to do something. What is Apple meant to do, Pastor Ryan? No. So many arguments and fights in churches. That's why folk can't get along in churches. Because we were meant to be soldiers. We were meant to be warriors. We were meant to be telling folk how good God is. But some folk just sit and some folk just soften. And the next we on the battlefield. Paul said this. As I take my seat, Paul said, I ain't ashamed. Pick all the boxes. Got something good in the bag? Yeah, got, got a Bible in the bag. Name it. Name it. Baby, if you forget everything that God is with you, in other words, you need undercover Christian. You need to be. A I've said this many times and I'll say it again. Don't, with me walking through that door, and it ain't because I'm a pastor. It ain't. And you know what gives you confidence? You know what gives you confidence? Oh, they got something good with them. When you got some good, it ought to give you confidence. See, I wouldn't have nothing. So despite my faults, despite her faults, despite of Jesus Christ. Why is that, Paul? Because it's something good. Look at what he says. Because it's, it's the power. It's the power of God. There's only proclamation of the good news. And if we want our neighbors to get grown people at your jobs, tell somebody. Tell somebody, tell your family he's talking about, Pastor Brian, I believe Paul does. Paul says, look, I'm, I'm, I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed. For it's the power of God unto salvation. To who? To who, Paul? Is it to white folk? No, it ain't. It is the power of God unto name it. What, what we gonna, what we gonna put in the bag, baby? Let's, let's, let's pick something that I'm not ashamed. And don't you understand that the world will try to shame you? Don't you understand that folk will try to shame you? Who is he to talk like saved you? Can I get a witness? Thank God that God has delivered you. As a matter of fact, I don't worry about folk talking about what I used to do. I don't worry about folk talking about what I used to be. Because you know what I tell them? You just gave half of my testimony for me. Know about? I was more low down than what you know about, but that's what I used to be. Now I thank God I ain't ashamed of the gospel because Jesus has saved me, sanctified me, delivered me. I mean, they attacked me, but then I, I went from Jerusalem and I, I preached in Athens, I preached in the intellectual center of the world. And when I was in, when I was in Athens, they didn't mob me, but they mocked life for the gospel. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. And so as I take my seat, we just need to remember that we got something better.
Why, 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 why wasn't you ashamed? Paul, because I, I understand. When I preached at Jerusalem, I was preaching to religious folk. But I got something better than religion. When, when, when I preached in Athens, I was preaching to people that were intellectuals. They, they understood reason. But I got something better than reason. When I preached at Rome, they were all about laws and rules and regulations. I thank God for Jesus, and I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Paul said, bring it, Paul. I'm coming, and I'm bringing it with me. But then, you know what? I, 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 I'm going to claim it. Claim it, Paul. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. As I take my seat, I'm going to give you something to think about this week. What's in, what's in your bag? Yeah. What do you talk about outside of this place? Right. What do you discuss with people when you leave here? Just remember, yes, but I ain't ashamed. Yeah. I'm not ashamed. We thank God for the word of God. We thank God for the power of God and the truth in the word of God. Can we close with a word of prayer today? Heavenly Father, Lord, it's, it, it seems like. It seems like some folk have forgotten what church is about. Lord, it seems like some folk really believe they're doing you a favor when they show up on Sunday. Doing you a favor if they offer any service. And it's to go. go. The world needs to see. So, Lord, we need to show. Lord, help us today. Give us the kind of boldness that Paul had. Give us the kind of boldness that the saints of old had. Yeah. Somebody said the gospel turned the world upside down. Yes, and it was carried by people. Help us be your hands. Help us have something in our bag and know that it's good. Help us not be afraid to take it to somebody. And when they ask us, Paul said, when, when they ask us the reason, let us always be ready. Always be ready to give a day. And most of all, Lord, I pray that we're not ashamed. For whosoever shall call on the name of God, Romans chapter 10 says, should not be ashamed. In other words, we won't be disappointed. If you're under the sound of my voice today, there's only one way men might be saved. I want to introduce you to Jesus today. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, will you come right now? Come right now. 17, if you're not ashamed to tell him you need him, he'll save you. The Bible says this, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, if you don't know him, will you come? And there are some of us here, Lord, that hear that every Sunday. We hear that every Sunday, and we say to ourselves, well, I can sit here because I'm, I'm saved. I don't, I don't need to get up. That's fine. You are saved. But since you hear that every Sunday, what's your excuse for not sharing that with somebody else? Since you got it memorized and know it by heart, since you know that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, and you know, help us to spread the good news today. To tell somebody that I want to share the good news. Because I'm a debtor. Lord, if none come today, I pray that somebody might be convicted if none are converted. I pray that somebody might understand that messages are not for entertainment. And people will say sometimes, ooh, you show sure did preach good. Ooh, that show did sound good. But preaching is not a show, and preaching is not to sound good. Preaching is to convince us of the Word of God. Lord, I pray for your people today that if we are not sharing our faith, that we will come to understand that that is one of the main reasons you left us here. To worship and then to be a witness. So Lord, help us to name it. Help us to bring it. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Though none have come. We thank God for the truth, the power, and the holiness of his word. We don't want a million times over the past week, how would I feel if my place? Because I know that mama was saved. And if I feel that way about my mama, I'm wrong not to feel that way about other people as well. There should be a burden in our hearts that people are dying and they don't know the Lord. So this message came from my love for people, my love for the Lord, 
at how I know, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that he makes the difference. Give him a hand clap of praise if you believe to share it with others. Spiritual explanation, the remain the body. The body will widely is her married name. We thank God for all of you. heads for a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for awakening us and allowing us to be good stewards and be givers of everything that you've blessed us with. In Jesus' name we pray. We thank you and amen. At this time, please give our announcing secretary a hand. Please stand. Social will be today after service. At the show starts at 7 o'clock p.m. Doors open at 6 p.m. This page will be greatly appreciated. If you need us, call. Practically my whole Christian life, I've heard this from. They challenge what I'm saying. What happens? It used to be 95 out of 100 that actually consistently share their faith. And the numbers on giving, tithing are pretty much the same. We can get together like it's a social club and just hang out together. The things I used to do, I don't even want to do no more. I've been, I've been, I've been redeemed. I've been changed. And I know he can do it for somebody else. That's what I want to share with these people. I want to share the good news. The good news. Ain't got to be smelt. Amen. But Dan, we're getting ready to go. He said, I don't feel them at all anymore. And we discover that. I said, we discover whether we are ashamed or not. That's one light to us. Our therapy deny me. If you are perfect by a long shot, ain't got salvation as the key thing, the critical thing that we have to talk about. Is love, my Jesus. Anybody here? that love the Lord. That was just the old saints way of saying you need to. This, these are the times that we live in. I said, how need to be proclaiming to the world. Bless us as we stand boldly in the folk. But the question is not what God is doing to these folks. The question is what are we trying to snatch them from the fire? So Lord, bless us as we leave this place, but not from your presence. Lord, we thank you for the ushers that usher today, the greeters that greeted today, the audiovisual team that served in the back today. We thank you, Lord, for the mail course that sang so well today for the music. Every visitor, if they didn't stand, Lord, we still pray for them. And then, Lord, we pray not a relationship that we have with you that gives us a relationship, Lord, to you who are able to keep that amen, 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 amen. and amen.